Hi, I'm going to have a look at the HTTP2 protocol. Specifically, I want to see if it's appropriate for use in hardware with limited resources whilst comparing it to features in the HTTP1 protocol stack. First of all, I'm going to need something to look at the packets and I'm going to be using Wireshark. So T-Shark is the command line variant of Wireshark and that will let us look at packets. Here we have a ping request. Here is what the Ethernet header is comprised of. First of all, the preamble is not captured by Wireshark because it's always the same. Then we have the ether type 86 DD. We will see that we have an IP version 6 packet. So next we need to look at the structure of, of a IPv6 packet. So now we know in the Wireshark capture, we can skip all of these leading bytes. Here I've got a bash script, which is a basic hello world HTTP server. I'm going to run the script. Then I'm going to do a curl request. So here is the captured curl request. Further down, we've got the captured response. So now as a comparison, I'm going to do similar, but with HTTP2. Python has a library called H2, which lets you implement the HTTP2 protocol. Here I've got a script for a HTTP2 server. And I've got also got another script for a HTTP2 client. So when I run the server, and then do a request. We have the HTTP preamble. As you can see, there's a bunch of carriage returns in here which are still used as the deliminator. And then you have a packet of the settings for the connection. Down here, we've got our response. When you make subsequent requests, you'll see that the packet of response data is slightly smaller. And that is achieved with stream IDs. So if we look at this packet of data compared to a HTTP one packet of data, we can clearly see that there's no ASCII header data. We've just got a bunch of non ASCII characters. So in HTTP two, the header is compressed and that's done by dynamically making a lookup table of header parameters which are stored against a stream ID. And data in HTTP2 is broadcast in data frames. And that is the main thing that caught my interest in HTTP2. So when you want to send larger data, you can split it up into smaller chunks. To demonstrate that, I'm going to send a whole bunch of data, send it as data frames, split up into small chunks. If we look here, it's not simply the payload. We've got some non-ASCII characters, and then we've got a bit of the payload. If we look at the specification, we see that the frame format is three bytes specifying the length. So here we've got five. Then we've got the type. Uh, type of zero is a data frame. Then we've got flags. And then we've got the stream ID. If we look at this data split up into small chunks of data frames, we'll see that they all have the same stream ID of three. And that allows the clients to combine them and reconstruct the data. And then finally, we have the five bytes of the data frame payload. Now to work with HTTP in C, this is the library uh, to use. It's a very complete library, but it's not 
particularly the easiest to follow. Now, because it is actually included in Arduino, I naively thought I'd be able to use this. However, once I finally managed to work out how to make a simple Hello World server, this is what happened. Fatal error out of memory. Anyway, that didn't work. To make matters worse, when working with HTTP2, you will most likely first be dealing with a HTTP1 request, which will request an upgrade to HTTP2, which is unnecessary overhead for a small microcontroller. So here is a captured packet of a HTTP upgrade request. Now, I'm sure it may be possible to cut corners and make a minimal HTTP server in a microcontroller which just deals with the data frames, but also taking into account uh, the need for a HTTP 1 upgrade request to HTTP 2, it does seem like there's simply too much overhead um, dealing with HTTP2 to, to use it in a small microcontroller, especially considering that there is a simple HTTP1 method of sending packetized data. Here we have the chunked transfer encoding for HTTP, and here's the specification. So we have a big bit of data and we chop it up into smaller packets. And then when we send each small packet, we have the chunk size, some optional metadata, a carriage return and line feed, then the chunk of data, then another carriage return and line feed. And you do that for each chunk. And then the final chunk has a zero some optional metadata and then a final carriage return and line feed. Now the reason this is of interest is because a microcontroller cannot read a large chunk of data and then send it. It simply doesn't have the resources but what it can do is schedule a task where it reads a small section of the data and then sends that as a HTTP response and then goes on to read another chunk of the data and send that as a HTTP response until all of the data has been sent to the client. I've written a little server in Python that uses this chunked data encoding. So then using t -shark, we can look at the packets being sent as small chunks. We've got one chunk and then we've got the final chunks and the client then reconstructs the chunked data. So in conclusion I think HTTP2 is ideal for WebSocket servers and servers that need to stream a lot of data to clients but I think it has too much overhead for use in a microcontroller, especially when the alternative HTTP1 solution is so simple. Uh, all you have to do is make up a string and then send that out as a HTTP response.